I request our Honourable Vice Chancellor for his welcome address, please. Mm -hmm. 
very good doctor to all of our university fraternity. Friends, it's a great moment for me personally and for the whole institution. I'm sure all my colleagues and students, sisters, scholars, staff, everybody in this university joins me in welcoming the most respected scientists of this country, Professor Ashish Dattaji and Professor Partho Mojinda. I am personally really excited, not only by their presence, but that we have finally succeeded in bringing him to this university. I have a great desire always that this university should be number one in the country. Let us see what happens to our efforts, but I am hopeful on this. Whether knowledge is derived out of intuition or empiricism, it becomes knowledge only the day we share it with public, we share it with society. Therefore, that sharing moment for the knowledge that has been acquired by our great scientist has come and we are grounding this first series of distinction lectures in which we will always get the best of our country and abroad to deliver their opinion before us. I have great pleasure in welcoming all of you and greatest pleasure in welcoming Professor Ashita to this university. With these words, I request Professor Partho Mojumdar to introduce the spot. Professor Hang Lu, respected Vice Chancellor of this university, Professor Shwajal Chakraborty, uh, Head of the Department of Biochemistry, uh, respected teachers of this university, students, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am humbled by the task that uh, Professor Hang Lu had bestowed on me to present to you the distinguished speaker today, Professor Ashish Doctor. All of you uh, likely have seen this. It's all over the university and also other institutions uh, in Kalyani, Calcutta and elsewhere. Uh, Professor Hang Lu has made sure that this, uh, uh, this poster reaches uh, all institutions, all science agencies in the country. So you're aware of the kind of accomplishments uh, that Professor Ashish Dutto has. And uh, so what, what, how do I introduce him? When I was asked uh, day before yesterday by Professor Chakraborty that uh, the Vice Chancellor has kindly requested uh, that I introduce uh, Professor Ashish Dutto to you, I was uh, thinking how I should and I don't want to take too much of your time because uh, obviously reading this entire thing is going to be uh, going to take a long time, as you know. Um, that uh, Professor Dotto is a Padma Bhushan. He is a great uh, person of great achievement, scientific and uh, science organization. He's um, founded an institution in India that's doing very, very well, the National Institute of um, Plant Genomics Research. Um, this is not only he is not only the founder director, but he is the architect of the idea uh, of um, uh, founding this institution. He has been uh, a former uh, vice chancellor of Jawaharlal Nehru University, etc. Um, he has, of course, been endowed with all kinds of medals and honors, and he is very well decorated. He is a fellow of all of the science academies in India and many science academies outside of India as well. So last night I was actually thinking how to introduce Professor Ashish Dutta and I've known him for many, many years, um, uh, very, very personally and I've seen him from you know, very, very close uh, uh, places. Um, so as I was thinking that once you, you, know, you try and understand a person from very close, you, you don't get a bird's eye view of that person. So last night I was just sitting down and thinking uh, what may have been the impact of Professor, um, Professor Ashish Dutta's personal research and what may have been the unifying theme of his research. And the unifying theme of his research, I might say, is that um, he has tried hard to unravel the molecular mechanisms which govern the expression and regulation of eukaryotic genes, or eukaryotic genomes, I, uh, I would say. So uh, essentially, this is what uh, Professor Rashid Dutto has uh, gone on to do throughout his uh, career. And his uh, career started with the discovery of uh, allosteric enzymes in the regulation of amino acid sugar, bacteria, uh, sugar metabolism in animal tissues. And he's gone on from there and I will just chart 
the various courses and as you will see that all of his uh, all of what he has done is essentially uh, under the same umbrella which is to understand the molecular mechanisms that are involved in expression and regulation of eukaryotic genes he went on to discover a novel RNA polymerase as one of the structural proteins of a bacteriophage. Um, he has made seminal contributions to understanding the regulation of protein synthesis in eukaryotes. His studies on gene regulation in Candida albicans of pathogenic yeast led to the discovery of an inducible catabolic pathway which has helped identify the virulence factors of, in this organism his later studies have shown, for the first time, the existence of a signal transduction system in Canada. The scientific work of Professor Dotto that has touched the lives of millions of people is his work on nutritional genomics, which is designed to create crops that are genetically tailored to provide enhanced nutrition for human beings and domesticated animals. Professor Dotto's laboratory isolated two novel genes named the lysine methionine rich storage protein gene called AMA1 from amaranthus and oxalate decarboxylase gene called OXBC from a fungus. These have received international patents, India's first. He has introduced the AMA1 amaranthus gene in the potato that has made the potato nutritionally rich in protein quality with increased productivity. In addition, the technology in the, in the industrial processing of animal feed supplement using yeast cells expressing AMA1 protein has been transferred to Cadilla Pharmaceuticals for commercial production. Using his discovery of the OXDC, his group has developed oxalate free uh, transgenic tomatoes which are, resistant, which are resistant to pathogenic fungus as well. As well. He's made transgenics to increase shelf life, improved drought resistance and fungal resistance along with increased nutritive value of the edible, uh, various edible plant products. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I present you today's uh, distinguished speaker, Professor Ashish Dokto. Um, he is going to talk to us on green to green science to society. Without further ado, Professor Dokto. Is it good afternoon? I know that every time you know that I get excited when I see that young stars are around. Uh, I must give thanks to my chancellor, Mr. Sanu, Professor Vartamal Majumda, of course, whom I know that from his childhood. And this is very attractive. Because, you know, I thought that how many times he came for me. So I didn't want to add any more, right, Sajan? So I said, okay, I, I'm coming also. Maybe you know that I'm quite excited. Something. Coming up at quite some time. Just now, you know, that you mentioned, I'm sure that all of you know the topic and see that. How we know that one can go to the past, you know, the seven years, you know, that I reach a place. Can I have the first one? Because I want to see you also coming. To this, close to this university, I came you know, quite some time back. Then I'm sure the all of you that person you that has is developing a new institute. I'm sure that one day, you know, this particular institute will take you know that in a place, you know, where everyone will be excited. And also I'm quite happy that you say after listening to very briefly of course, you know, my sister has a lot of you know that plan, a lot of things. Nicole? So I think that's the kind of a thing. What he said is a he said dream to bring science to society. 
particular event. He's saying, he said, think of it, he said, my science is a journey, not a destination. And all is tell the road to success is always dot, dot, dot means under construction. Don't think that your road is, always think about the road is under construction. That exactly when you understand that, what science today and what science tomorrow, so you have to do that. And I think that should be the driving force for any person, anyone, they want to do science. And that's why it's a, I always say it's a kind of a dream. Hello? Okay. It can change. Anyway, that's a 
Everything you know that. All this you know that. That's where you can see the nouns work. If you jump, you know that. Then you find this part. Anyway, so what I say that that is the idea. It's an original idea in that. And then he says that anything you do, I always say that today's science is a tomorrow's death. But passion keeps success. If you don't have that, particular science, what do you do? If you say that you don't have that, you are doing because just do, you know, that it's a kind of a job. To get your money, to you get your salary, get you something. That I can tell you that always you see the passion, they give you success. But think about it. When you are talking to the day, in part of a day, always you know that is saying, keep it in mind, progress is a constant journey. And where many variables, up and down. But that's it. Very important. But then you, I'm telling you to all the youngsters, follow your own path. I'm not telling that okay that you don't have to listen to your parents. But you should be guided by what exactly you know that you want to do in your life. And that's why you're beginning, beginning your journey. At. That's what they go say long term. Exactly. And it doesn't matter what profession ultimately is. But keep it in mind. This is true for the not only for the scientists, for the faculty, but aspiration should not be out of proportion. You should know how you stand. Otherwise, always I say that, like a, you think that you have a key in your hand, but somebody has to change the law. It's aspiration, perspiration, the thing. And this is a kind of a mediocrity in the thing. Keep it in mind. Too much, too soon, you cannot have. If you do something, it will come. And keep it in mind. And that part, I think that the commission that just mentioned that candidate, I'll tell you that. In fact, I from here, you know, that when I went to US, worked on the bacterial fires and animal fires. Then what people they do here? Whatever they, what they training they do, come back and try to do. But that is a period, I'm telling you, say, 70s, that's what I'm talking about. That time, say, most of the people, they are not born. 54 years back. But for, for, I'm sorry, for. So that is the time, you know, that I had a lecture. That is, I was thinking that I will come back by Jim Watson. <coughs> I'm sure that all of you know the Watson is great data structure. Double headings. Watson gave a lecture in Ghostly Hub. He said, okay, that people, you know, that last several decades, people involved, you know, they worked on E. coli, bacteria. Now it's a kind of eukaryote could come in the picture. And he mentioned saccharomyces and said. It's a kind of a simple pattern. Just like you can grow like bacteria, that is the pattern that I thought. So that's the point I decided I'll work on saccharomyces. That's why the candidate came to me. I'm talking that I returned from US in 1973. So I decided to work on saccharomyces. It was my first student studying growing that time. That time gave you the barren line, nothing was there. Okay, so it's all the old campus. New campus, 
nothing. And of course, whole camp has not belong to Delhi, set anything for all day. But we are staying at that time, not in the campus, is the Sharvala influence. We are IIT. If somebody knows the Delhi the picture, is that from there, Jedu takes about several, about 50, 20 kilometers they have walked. So that Sharvala influence, that's a next door neighbor was a very evident career surgeon in all India school of medical sciences. Why I am telling you that how the idea comes? He was very close, became very close friend. By difference of almost 30 years between both of us. Doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. So it's a kind of a thing. If evening I have nothing much to do, not the two infrastructure that I can do science and a little bit started. But cardiac surgeon used to talk about his own, you know that. Then one day he was very, very excited. I said, what happened? He said, let's enjoy the evening. He said that said, today is a very, very difficult surgery has done. Cardiac surgery. And my patient will survive. I said, excellent. Then we enjoy the evening together. And next couple of days, I could meet him. So I went through, after two, three days, I went to the house. He came, I saw that he said, get away. He has kept his eyes. I said, what happened? He said, my patient died. I said, you said everything you did that is a patient survived. And then he mentioned, he said, Canada infection. I never heard, I'm telling you frankly, I never heard Canada before. I'm talking and he said, infection. So I, then he just entered. He, he didn't want to talk anymore. He was, you know that, he's a wicked. I said, you know. Yes, in So from there I went to jail. Doesn't matter whether 50, 20 kilometers. What? Check the library. I found this only one thing. Is nothing so much. Is that mention the Canada is a human pathogen. So I thought that he said yes. That's the point I decided not to start the Kenya work as a modern system, to work on gene expression or anything, you know, that we need to not sacrifice what other people are calling, let them call. And that's the beginning of that is one. But then, certainly, you know, that he said, you can see, I found that it's not an easy, not like sacrifices. Of course, you know, that can help you also a lot of things. So this is a kind of a thing, you know, that why I just, you know, that then it is so important. Because five people that die in AIDS, five people that die, you know, that they certainly know that, you know, that immunosuppressed condition and find that. 